how to start dating after divorce i am 43 should i wait for an overseas love hmm also my friends i need to know how long should you wait for your overseas love because i shared that in, in the previous uh, videos that long distance relationship it's not a serious or real relationship you get together on the weekends once a month or even every weekend or once every two months you have a great get together on the weekends but what are you doing during the week you don't even know this person are they greedy are they stubborn are they having addictions because you're not observing them how they're living throughout the week maybe they have gambling addiction maybe they're uh, playing video games all day long and that's how they're releasing their stress and so um, start looking for a man or a woman in your town in your state 20 miles away 30 miles away 50 miles it becomes a little bit challenging but it's still okay but definitely not overseas unless you can move there and start dating them there or they can move and start dating you where you are otherwise long distance relationship is not a real relationship you're not really getting to know each other even if you're on the phone every day even if you're texting even if you're doing the skype so i am sorry to disappoint you with regards to the long distance relationship six years divorce and been married 18 years and you're 43 got it well six years it's been a while which is a great thing it's not it hasn't been only a few weeks or a few months and now i will be very honest with you as i've been sharing a lot of my videos and i've been putting it out there with you my friends and now i'm going to even deepen this conversation most of us when we're single at some point we become very desperate and very lonely and we as a human beings trying to find somebody who can fulfill this loneliness or this anxiety or this feeling of fear of aging old and alone. And if you have this fear and if you want to meet a man or a woman to fulfill your loneliness, to give you sex because you're horny or to help you financially because you are not stable or because you're a single mom, you will be bankrupt. You cannot seek someone else to fix whatever is not working with you. And that's why, my friends, it is so critical for you to start spiritual practices. Because I see women on my TikTok putting out there, oh, I started femininity journey, I went to this program, and after three days, I'm feminine. My friends, you cannot become feminine after three days, after a month, or if, after two months. No matter what kind of strategies people out there are giving you, it's analytical strategy. You cannot fake femininity. It's either there or not. And so when you start spiritual practices, the masculine energy starts to peel off of you when you're a woman. When you are desperate, when you're lonely, you start to fill yourself with love. And therefore, after some time when you attract a man or if you attract a woman, you already feel whole and complete. And therefore, you're attracting a man or a woman who is also whole and complete. And therefore, you are here, he is there, and you can walk through life as a two complete happy people. Otherwise, you're handicapped, missing arm and leg, He's handicapped because he's dealing with addiction or he's a feminine man and you're trying to be together and it won't work. So wherever that in your relationship or marriage did not work, it's time for you to process that, heal that, become whole and complete with yourself and then go out dating. And when you will be entering the dating scenes, you're going to start feeling that you're gravitating better and better men as you healing and peeling off this masculine energy of pain, disappointment, maybe some resentment, maybe some anger towards your ex-husband that it didn't work, maybe because he was cheating, maybe because you did not appreciate him for what he was, whatever those reasons are. Because most of the time when we go through divorce, we want to 99% blame the partner, like they are the bad ones. The problem was only with them. And we never want to fully take responsibility for ourselves. But like I said, it takes two to tango and it takes two people to push the marriage towards divorce. It failed, 
because of you as well. And you need to discover that and heal that and forgive yourself and obviously your ex-husband. And so once you're going to start using the spiritual practices, which I already shared in many of my videos on YouTube, you can start waking up and doing either affirmations for at least five minutes, either meditation for at least five minutes or a prayer, and you're going to start feeling yourself whole and complete little by little, little by little. And then you won't be desperate to meet someone to give you that love or happiness or whatever else that you want. That's the key to the dating scene and whatever else people are telling you, you have to go to this bar, you have to go to this gym. Yes, but if you're broken inside, if you're going to walk into a bar or the gym or your friend's house, you're going to attract a broken man. And if you're whole and complete, no matter where you are, you're going to start attracting people to, who will reflect your inner world. And so that's what I recommend. Yeah. I really love for him to bring me flowers. And to him, having a Russian background, it's absolutely normal because that's what he grew up, uh, grew up with. We like certain gifts. We like certain ways of appreciation. In the United States, do you see American men who will give you flowers every week? Very rare. And so do you see how culture makes a difference? For example, uh, some women who are from their background, they like certain movies, certain music. And so unless you go to Ukraine or you go to Hungary or you go to Turkey until you learn a woman's culture, if you're bringing her here, she will be depressed. She'll be lonely because her nest of her friends and her family is back home. And so I usually say it's ideally for you to move there and learn the culture. See your woman in her natural environment and see if she's really will be okay moving to United States or Canada or West Europe to see if she's going to be even happy. And you can do it slowly. You can bring her for a week. You can bring her for a month and not like taking her all the way out to United States where she's fully disconnected from her friends and family. And women go through severe depression sometimes the first few years when they are in United States or Western world from India or from Middle East or from Russia or Ukraine. So it's just an idea. A lot of men are thinking, oh, women are overseas are wonderful. Yes, until they come here and they're depressed. And then they want you to provide and protect, but you are broke and you cannot do it. Or you have, she expects you certain things that she's accustomed to and you have no idea. And maybe she doesn't even have a good communication skills to share what's important for her. And so it's just an illusion that it's an easy way out. Yeah. I've been single for over a year. How do I go back to dating? You just go back. Just go back to dating. But you have to, again, remember what I shared 5-10 minutes ago with regards to when you work on yourself, you attract completely different people. If you just think that you are the best of the best without doing any spiritual practices and your masculine ma energy, you have masculine energy, you go get it, you're successful, you're going to be attracting a feminine man. So it's not about how to go back to dating. It's how much have you invested into yourself becoming a true high value feminine woman who really can appreciate man for what he is and really seeing a bad boy or a feminine man from a true masculine man who really can provide, protect, and lead. And you can attract him only if you're a feminine woman that values herself, that has a spiritual relationship, deep relationship to God. Because without it, foundation of the relationship will be either on the sex or on the money or physical attraction, but all of that will go away. It's just a matter of time. And so that's why, my friends, start investing into yourself. And if you don't know how, a lot of women this week is asking me how to start a feminine journey. My friends, if you're going to start reading a books, all of that is analysis. If you're going to get smarter, it's not going to make you feminine. For example, you cannot learn how to ride a bicycle by reading a book. You've got to get on the bicycle and you've got to start riding. And same thing here. You've got to choose which route you're going to take spiritual route and it's not like going to church once a month for a check mark but really building your relationship spiritual relationship to a higher power so you can start peeling off this masculine energy and building the trust 
with higher power. So then you're not going to rely only on men or only on women. Make me happy. Give me money. Give me sex or give me something else. And that's what you need to overcome and do. And once you feel whole and complete and you become feminine and you're not attached that this man has to do this or he has to do that, and you really appreciate him for who he is, that God brought him to your life and you feel at ease with yourself and you feel happy even without a man or even without a woman, that's when you're actually starting to attract right people. Me and my friends. Oh, thank you. Somebody's asking me, thanking me for my content. I appreciate that, my friends. Um, because you obviously can tell I am here for you. I'm not doing it for myself. I feel like it's my calling. And that's why I truly value your acknowledgement and you coming here and learning. Divorced now for 14 years. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't matter whether you've been divorced <clears throat> 5 years, 10 years, or 20 years. What matters when you're going to start investing into yourself. The changes will start happening little by little. As you're going to start investing into yourself to spiritual practices, you're going to see little drastic changes and they accumulate. Every day they accumulate and you're all of a sudden going to start seeing either your relationship with your current husband, boyfriend, girlfriend or wife or kids going to start changing. You become less angry because if we living in a state of anger, frustration, upset, we're living in the past. That means we cannot forgive someone. And if we cannot forgive someone, we're poisoning ourselves. And if we expect something from other person, we're living in the future. And we're hoping that they're going to love us a certain way. They're going to give us money a certain way. They're going to propose to us a certain way. We're going to get a job, certain job. And we're constantly dreaming about how things should be. We're living in the future. And so what helps you with daily affirmations or prayer or meditation? You're going to start living in the moment. And when you start living in the moment, all of a sudden you start to appreciate everything that is happening to you. Even if the suffering starts to kick in, relationship is not working, money is not working, relationship to kids or parents or husband or wife is not working, you feeling that the life's exam is coming, coming your way for you to overcome that, to get to a different stage in life. And every time you overcome something, you feel more and more spiritually content and happy. And that's what actually higher power is sending us the difficulties and challenges. Because let's be honest, if we're all happy, do we ever going to meditate, pray, or do the affirmations? Not at all. Only through difficult times we go on our knees and we'll start praying or meditating. And if you're going to do it, not only when the difficult times kicks in, but when you do it on a daily basis, because discipline, spiritual discipline, gives you the happiness that we all want. We're born to be happy. But if we're not doing anything to become happy and we're just complaining and waiting, when will somebody come to make us happy? It will not happen. And in the reality, mm, right now, monks in Nepal, in <clears throat> India, they proved that the time doesn't happen 24 hours anymore. The time moves now, not even 14 hours a day, 13 hours a day. It started to shift a year ago. So it's an illusion that we live where time moves 24 hours. It moves so much faster that we are not even able to complete all our exams and karmas from previous life and from this life in one lifetime. And so we have to think about what spiritual gurus and spiritual teachers are trying to tell us, that we have to do a spiritual work now in order to be happy. And so it's an illusion that you're going to die and then you're going to be happy in heaven or uh, really miserable in hell. We're actually going to be reborn over and over and over again until we complete our exams. But most of the time, we're just chasing like slaves. Oh, let me just get this um, 
job. Let me just get this money. Let me just get the, the husband. You know, we are not people who are born to work. Businessmen in the in 1800s made a huge disaster by thinking they're going to bring 500 slaves. It's okay if 100 or 200 dies, but I'm going to be rich. It's consumer mentality. They violated people. But now we are violating ourselves by us women going to workplace and dumping our kids in daycare and thinking somebody else going to raise us. And so 100 or 150 wealthy people are controlling the whole economy and society, but we are miserable. We're giving our femininity to workplace and thinking that, oh, men still going to provide and protect for me because I'm sexy or beautiful. But men are not attracted to the masculine women who are working, have attitude and leaving their kids and have the attitude, I don't need you. And so that's why we have to question, why are we even born? Why are we here? What is our true purpose? And our purpose is not to get an education and go to work like slave and come home exhausted, watch TV and pass out. Then we're living life like animals. Animals have their home. Animals look for food. Animals have sex and animals sleep. And we are asleep like them. We have consciousness, and our consciousness is for us to realize what is our duty as a woman, what is our duty as a man, as a father, as a husband, as a son, as a daughter, and as a human being. But because we're so stressed out, and because we're so consumed by continue consuming, getting this money to buy a purse or shoes or house or car, that we're not even thinking we're not slowing down to even think why we're here. What is my main duty? And God wants from us is to connect to Him. Come to Him. And I know this is deep spiritual conversation, but I would like for you to start at least thinking about, even if it's not through spirituality, through analysis, what is your purpose? Why are you here? So I'm sorry if I deviated from the conversation and your questions, but it was in my heart and my soul and it took me to this route. And so if you have questions about spirituality, I will be really gladly and happy to answer to you to some of the knowledge that I already have by studying a Vedic knowledge and yogi knowledge and not the yoga that you think the asanas, which is poses that you do. No, true yogi are meditating between 6 to 12 hours a day. And then they do asanas, which is the poses to keep their physical body healthy. So if you have any questions with regards to that, I'll be happy to answer. All right. So I have been married seven years, have two beautiful daughters. I can stand my husband. He goes to work for two weeks. You're saying you can't stand your husband or you can't stand your husband. He goes to work for two weeks. Well, if he goes to work for two weeks, do you know you attracted the husband in a such a way that he will be away from, from you for two weeks so you can do what you do without being triggered by him, obviously. Um, so I hear you. And the first week of with us, I'm thinking of divorce. I'm so happy when he leaves. He cheated so many things. Mm -hmm. Now, you have to get that. And this is going to be challenging to some of you, but please be with this conversation. And I've shared that before and I'll share it again. <clears throat> we get, each human beings, what we deserve. If you've done good deeds in this life and previous life, you get a wonderful husband who is a protector, who is a leader right away. Because you've collected the good deeds from previous lives. And now you get an easy life here. If you've done some nasty things in previous life or early on this life, they all accumulate. And then you get a husband who lies and cheats. Now, if you don't do nothing, things will stay this way or will get a little bit, little bit worse. Or you shift to spiritual practices and you're going to start meditating or you're going to start doing affirmations or prayer. And God does miracles all the time. And then you're going to start having a confidence to put a stop to your husband's behavior and educating him what's acceptable or what's not. And if you're going to overcome this exam, you're either going to leave 
or your husband going to start changing and start respecting you. So here you have two choices. Ignore it and being a victim and pretending that nothing will change and he is the worst man and blaming everything how terrible he is and you're going to be a victim or you're going to start being responsible and changing yourself so you will have a power to influence your husband. Because if you walk away without fixing your marriage, most likely you're going to attract another cheater or a liar. Because this exam is going to continue to follow you until you pass exam. And that's why I say 99% divorce is not a solution. Spiritually, it's been proven. You can go through divorce if both husband and wife is happy, they're good with each other, and they realize, you know what? We're going separate ways because I want to connect to God and I just want to buy cars and homes and travel around the world. But I wish you happiness. I wish you happiness. And people go separate ways. But 99% of the time when people are happy, they don't even want a divorce. But otherwise, if you're angry, if you're blaming, if you're miserable, and if you go through divorce, you will 99% of the time going to attract a partner who is going to be even worse than your current husband and you will attract him after seven years because the person who leaves a husband or wife not going to deserve anyone better your exam is to pass this exam with your husband understand that you've done something nasty in your previous life most likely you were the cheater and the liar and that's why you attracted this husband and i know for 99 percent of the people it's very hard to swallow because Unfortunately, in Christianity, we're not taught this way. And I'm coming from a Christian background. And to me, it was a big shocker when I start understanding why the universe and how the karma works. And so if you are open to understanding this concept, please do. If not, I understand. I won't be able to help you. Either way, the choice, choice is yours. And there's nothing wrong, again, with Christianity or Muslim or any religion or any spirituality. I'm just sharing my knowledge. And see if you can absorb and understand this new concept, most likely, if you, if you have never heard of yogi or Vedic uh, spirituality. So I hope it helps. But again, the, the key here is to start doing something about it sitting around and just complaining about it not gonna make a difference thank you diesel for your <laughs> roses i appreciate it so let's see two other questions uh he makes lots of money but um but doesn't mean anything but it continues with the same person right yeah does a cheating man loves his wife well the moment the person start thinking about cheating he is already betraying his wife. But at the same time, men are very sexual in nature. And if a woman, let's say hypothetically, has two years of cancer, men won't be able to wait for her for two years. He has his needs. Very rare where a man will have a compassion to be okay two years without a sexual intimacy. While a woman is pregnant is one thing. But if a woman is very healthy and she neglects a husband, she is not trying to do anything um, to connect with him on the sexually. But I'm not saying every day because he wants sex every day. But a woman's also got to connect learn to forgive her husband for his mistakes in order to connect with him sexually and if a woman fully for, uh, neglects a man it's going to be a matter of time when he will be looking for sex on the side and it's not necessarily that he doesn't love his wife it's just he is looking for something that he's missing in his marriage and most likely 99 percent men are looking for either sex or feminine energy because a wife is not feminine doesn't want to appreciate him admire him feed him connect with him a man becomes hungry and they start looking on the side and so again if your husband is cheating, you got to start looking authentically into yourself. What are you doing wrong? Because it takes two to tango. And most of the time women are just like, oh, he's horrible. He's cheating. But what have you done for him to start cheating? Because again, 
if he was a cheater from the get-go, you ignore that by not dating him and understanding that he's a cheater. And if he all of a sudden starts cheating after six years of your marriage, that means you are doing something wrong and that's why he's cheating. And so again, it takes two, my friends, two men not just going to go out of the blue and start cheating. So please think about it. Yeah. I am 25 into, thank you for the hearts, my friends. I'm 25 into self-growth, spirituality, living with my boyfriend of one and a half years. But how do I know he is the one? Um, my friends, we are saying he is the one by declaring it. For the longest time, I was studying different spirituality. I started yogi spirituality. I was like, wow, so powerful. Then I would study Vedic spirituality. Wow, so powerful. Then I would study Buddhism. I was like, wow, so amazing. And I couldn't decide what's better. Until my spiritual teacher said, choose one. Choose one. And I chose one, even though I listened to other teachers as well. But you have to choose one. But if you're thinking there's someone is better, yes someone is better grass on the other side will always be greener yeah someone will be more handsome someone will be more richer somebody will be more smarter and so that's why you have to date for a year and not sleep or live with the person to understand do you connect with them are they intelligent is it interesting if you're bored he's definitely not the one the man has to be intelligent you have to feel that he is a leader you have to feel that he can protect you but at the same time if you're not a feminine woman a man not gonna grow in those qualities because a man gonna protect and lead and provide to a woman who is truly appreciating him admiring him and who is feminine who is loyal who is a high value woman who is not demanding things and so I would on yourself be looking at yourself because if you're not happy with your boyfriend and if you're not certain that he is the one, that means you have also insecurities about yourself or maybe you're not even listening to your gut feeling because first few months when we're dating someone, our gut feeling tells us this is not the right person. But because they're sexy or good looking or rich, we're like, it's okay, I'm gonna continue dating. And the more we're ignoring that gut feeling, the more it's knocking. And so I'm not sure what's the case with you. You have to listen to yourself. If you know from the beginning that he was not the right person, but now you're attached because you have sex, because you're living together, because more it's convenient, then yes, it's the wrong person. But if you're just thinking somewhere else, somebody is better, then you're going to continue not being happy with the next and the next person because ideal and perfection doesn't exist. No one is perfect. The more good qualities you're going to meet in a person, the more the same or the bad qualities they'll have. Always 50% is good, 50% is bad. And so the more better qualities they have, the more bad qualities they will have. The less good qualities they have, the less bad qualities they'll have on the other side. It's just everything in life is a balance. It's a harmony like that. And no one is out there with 90% good and 10% bad. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. So I hope that helps. I love learning from you. Thank you. I appreciate that. My boyfriend has ADHD and sometimes it's hard to get his attention. Well, it's your choice. You either got to accept his ADHD or you got to move on because his ADHD with time not going to get better. It might get worse, but it's not going to get better. At the best, it's going to stay the same. And that's why when we see something that we don't like in our uh, significant other, it's our main duty to accept it. Now, if he would be a husband, I would say 100% work on accepting your husband. But because he is your boyfriend, you still have a choice. You don't have a rank, you don't have a commitment, and therefore you be authentic with yourself. If it drives you that crazy, move on. But if you really want to make make it work with him, that means you have to work on accepting him. I have one quality still that sometimes drives me crazy in my husband. And I'm doing everyday spiritual practices to accept him. I accepted the five ones in the previous 10 years. Now I have only one left. And it's a piece of cake, honestly. So we have to be responsible and stop making our significant other wrongs, boyfriend or husband. Because it's our duty to respect and accept 
our partners because in acceptance that is a hundred percent true love everything else is an illusion if you don't accept your husband's ADA or boyfriend's ADHD or if you don't accept in um, your boyfriend let's say that he is not let's say what else that he is five eight it's an illusion that you love him that means you're still poking that something is wrong with him yeah uh, should I be concerned? Mm, light skinned, should I be concerned? I'm not sure what this question is connected to. Uh, it's even more difficult now with war time trauma. Yes, yes, homie, I hear you. Ukraine's war is making it more challenging and more difficult. Yeah, I hear you. What about two people of different cultures that are born and live in the United States? <clears throat> it depends. To some families, uh, they have a very strong tradition from their cultural background. And to some, for example, our sons speak Russian. Uh, but to some families, I see it's not important and they don't speak Russian. They don't speak uh, other languages uh, to what their culture is. And so therefore, it's not even about where you're coming from and you were born here. It's about how much are you willing to accept um, your partner and sacrifice for whatever that you don't like because we're as a human beings in the modern society very selfish we're working on changing our partners instead of working on changing ourselves because nobody wants to change nobody and if you work on changing yourself sooner or later your partner's gonna start mirroring you mirroring meaning reflecting your changes but most of the time people are like oh the culture is wrong this is wrong let it go except if you really truly love the person you're going to be accepting with whatever different cultures that they're from yeah uh, just became a top viewer thank you i think you should know by now i'm also in the same boat okay got you thank you for sharing let's see more questions my friends okay okay let me go back if a guy plans every day to be special how do i think how do i thank him for the efforts without overdoing it that's actually a good question um <clears throat> i would highly recommend for you to watch uh, my lecture called six stages to create a happy and healthy relationship on youtube it's hour and a half or two hours long where you're going to get more detailed answer from this question but i'll try to answer it here as well right now you see a woman in a dating process is doing only 10 percent, and man is doing 90 <clears> percent. <throat> i want you to think of it as a wildlife two deers are beating and fighting against each other to win a deer a dear girl and in all animal kingdom for the most part males are fighting to get the best girl and the strongest win and so when a man is doing the effort he takes you to a restaurant that you like he takes you to a concert he takes you to a park that you like he takes you to somewhere else he's putting an effort you should definitely take your time and acknowledge him you made this date the best day I've ever had and I want to acknowledge you walking with you under the moonlight or in this botanical garden was the best date i've ever had and every time you feel that he's putting an effort you acknowledge him from your heart and that's by the way is more than enough acknowledgement appreciation and admiration which men are very hungry for those but women insecure women they think he took me to a restaurant he spent 50 dollars i gotta give him sex insecure women give sex high value woman admire and acknowledge a man so this is a really good question but for more details i recommend you to watch this video six stages how to create a happy and healthy relationship where you will know how to build a healthy relationship not to rush and when you should have the sexual intimacy what you should discuss during this intimacy and what questions do you gotta go through before even having sex so i hope it's gonna help you a lot great question did i get a monster in the law because my past life or karma monster in law because my past life or karma 
yes consider if you got a mother-in-law who is a monster that means you were a monster mother-in-law in your past life and that's how karma is punching you because <clears throat> A lot of mistakes um, in India, when they talk to you, they can tell your previous life. And you know how? By you asking them a question, what you're struggling with, they can even see how you were in a previous life as a woman, as a man doing the same thing. But here, I'm not even a mistake. Whatever you are not satisfied is what you've done in a previous life. And so now it's your exam to accept this monster mother-in-law and when you're gonna accept her you're gonna pass this exam you still gotta have a boundaries you're not gonna allow her to destroy your relationship and marriage obviously but at the same time just know that you've done something like that what she's doing to you please give me your man space he can't be with you all the time uh my friends Please do not give advice. Once you open your channel, you can give advice on your channel. But here, if you can, learn to listen. Because as a human beings, we constantly um, disrespect others and give our opinions. And on my channel, I do not like when people do that once you're an expert once you've been in the field i don't know five ten or twenty years you'll open your channel and you will give that advice but for now please just absorb the information so you can grow yeah is it bad sign if he didn't finish school he's 23 and works two jobs instead well <clears throat> You see, that means how insecure you are that you attracted a man who did not finish school. And eventually, maybe right now it will work for you. But when you're going to be 30 and his intellect is of a 16-year-old because he's going to physically grow. But his intellect might stay at the 16 and 17-year-old because he's lacking education. And most likely you will be bored and most likely you're going to leave him. And then you will be complaining why he's not making enough income. You see, for a man, it's very important to attract a physically attractive woman who is either pretty, sexy, beautiful, etc. Because they go by looks. And now a lot of masculine women doing the same thing. But this is a biggest mistake because a woman, 99, who is intelligent and confident, is looking for a man's intelligence iq and so you will never gonna feel protected you will never gonna feel that he's leading you and he's providing you if he's not intelligent and so that's why when a woman goes on dates that's the number one she should be checking instead of jumping in bed or looking at his six packs she needs to see what is his iq how intelligent he is what is his goals where he's heading in life because only then a woman gonna feel protected because if a man is thinking about i want to work in mcdonald's uh, hopefully next year i'm gonna become uh, assistant of a manager making twelve dollars an hour and he's already 25 years old that's a problem that's a problem and that's a reality i am not saying that every man gonna be making hundred thousand a year no and not every woman deserves a man who makes a hundred thousand dollars a year but all i'm trying to say a man has to have an ambition to become a leader to become provider and protector and so if you attracted a man like that consider that you for now insecure and if you want to meet a better man or for your man to start getting the education you need to work on your self-esteem once you're going to work on your self-esteem and you're going to start getting educated spiritually men mainly spiritually my friends you're going to be influencing your man to start educating himself so he can become a provider and protector and a leader good question okay let's see <clears throat> The things you teach and say, you would never hear a man say this intelligent things. I see what you mean. <clears throat> we attract um, a people, like I said previously, that we deserve. If you think that you are attracting only dumb and stupid men, that means you feel that you deserve to attract the dumb losers who will be saying weird things. And again, men for the most part have to be so spiritually advanced in order to say things that you want. And these are going to be usually men in their 40s and 50s who are really spiritually advanced. Um, otherwise, yeah, most of the time, the society right now 
is going the way where material things are number one priority. And if material things are number one priority, men are not going to be interested to make you happy, to make you satisfied, to make sure that you are protected and you are provided. In order for you to deserve this kind of man, you have to invest into yourself for at least a year or two doing spiritual practices where you're going to stop judging people. Because when people are becoming spiritual, they become mainly the number one quality that starts to show up. They become kind. Kind and accepting and compassionate. And when you become kind and compassionate, you attract completely different type of men. Yeah. Men are superficial and shallow. Again, this is the conversation. If you think our men are superficial and shallow, you're going to be attracting superficial and shallow men. In my spiritual practices, when I go to spiritual retreats, I never meet men like that. My husband is not like that. And so if you think superficial men are all that you are attracting, that means you back in the background feel that you don't deserve and you have a low self-esteem. And it's a nasty truth. But you have to face your insecurities. You got to overcome your pain and anger from the past who that been caused by men. But not all men are like that. If you're thinking all oh, men are cheaters, superficial, liars, and shallow, you that's all you're going to be attracting. But that's not true. Not true at all. I give best advice. Thank you, my friends. My husband seem, seems uninterested in me. Yeah, sometimes men go through the stage um, where they lose interest. And typically, men go through the stage when a woman stop acknowledging, admiring, and appreciating men. And how um, they see that you stop either putting makeup or dressing up for them, giving them warm attention, uh, admiring them, giving them compliments, and they start losing interest. Or maybe there's... Um, there's more bad that you're causing in a relationship than good. And I always say the rule. Every time you say man to a man no, you have to then say at least three times yes, ideally five. Because men are very allergic to criticism and no. Even to my son, to an eight-year-old, when I say no, I got to remember that I have to say five times yes. And he's asking me, mom, I want to watch YouTube videos for two hours. And I say, no, we have a rule, 15 minutes. And then, wow, he gets really upset with me. And so then I have to figure out where I can do five yeses. He asked me, take me to trampoline park. It's 45 minutes away. I take him to trampoline park. He's taking me, let's go to McDonald's to get a cinnamon roll. I, we have a rule, no McDonald's, but now I have to say yes, you know? And so I have to find a way to say five yeses. And so that's how we have to be responsible to how we treat men. And if you constantly say, no, 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 you're not taking care of yourself, you're gaining weight, no makeup, no dressing up, no acknowledgement, no admiration, men at some point, they're like, mm, I'm not that interested in her. More criticism, more no's, and not a lot of admiration and appreciation. So please think about it. Yeah, this is the biggest thing that men experience after a while, and they lose interest. Yeah. Okay, can jealousy or negativity cause death in a partner? Let me think about it. Death, death, jealousy or negativity. Maybe not the jealousy and negativity. I cannot think of jealousy and negativity can cause a death in the partner. But if there was a lot of anger and you felt that you don't want your partner, you wish her death, you wish to get rid of her, you wanted to escape her, and if she felt that for years, that could cause a death. That could cause a death. But if it's just negativity and jealousy, if there was a lot of charge and hate, the hate that you really sometimes wish to a person death, that could happen. That could happen. It's very rare, but it does happen. But if it's just jealousy and negativity to not that degree, then most likely it's connected to her previous life. And also the death. What kind of death? Is it um, suicide or is it a car accident? That also matters. Yeah. But at the same time, you have to get... Um, Vedic and yogi knowledge and spiritual knowledge shares with us that we, as a human beings, we choose our life. Meaning your partner already chose to be that, 
to die at this age, to choose you as a partner, because through you she was passing her karma from a previous life or his karma. And so they already chose you in order to finish the exam. And so you cannot just blame yourself or it's just me and because of me she or he died. No, it was their karma. We're not gods. We cannot cause that much harm. There might be some responsibility to your part, you know, but you cannot take it all unless you truly every day were wishing your partner to die, uh, which I had a car, um, client like that many years ago. He could not stand his wife. He was a very wealthy businessman and his wife gained 35 pounds and he's like, I just don't want her. She's not sexy. She's not pretty. She doesn't take care of herself. She's so ugly. I wish she would die. I wish she would die. And guess what? His wife tried to commit five times a suicide and on the sixth time she died. Yeah. Yeah. But I hope that this is not the case with you. I am 56 and still alone. It's difficult to find a good person. What shows up in my space when someone is at 56 and single, it's either you are too focused on yourself or you're seeking a perfection. Uh, because there's no one, if you're judging, there has to be this kind of a good person and they're not good enough for you. That means you are dealing with perfectionism. And I shared that in a previous video a few weeks ago, but I want to repeat it. God is not silly. And who sends us a good person is God. And once a woman starts disconnecting from her desires and what kind of a person she needs to meet and starts serving the community, serving women, serving girls, serving boys, children, cats, dogs, wild animals, you are in the community serving, you bringing and doing good deeds, and you're disconnecting that you're single, you're desperate, you want to meet someone, that's when... A God sends you a good person. Yes, because for us, we're so living in an analytical mind. We're like two plus two equals four. But if we're living like that and not understanding the way the universe works, we will be very bankrupt because it's like, okay, uh, I am looking online, but I'm not attracting a good man because you don't deserve a good man. What are you doing to the community? God is watching us. What are you doing good? I'm not, I'm getting zero from being on a TikTok with you. I'm sharing my knowledge. I'm sharing my love. But I'm making God happy. And I'm sure in some ways he will thank me. And you got to figure out how can you give to the community. Are you caring about older people, other women, kids, cats and dogs? The more you're going to serve and disconnect from your desire of meeting a good man, that's when he will send you. And you got to stop expecting, oh, God, send me this good man in two months because for two months I've been serving the community. He will figure it out. Because again, we've accumulated bad deeds. We forget about them and we're thinking, I'm a, such a good person. Why am I still single? Again, everything that is happening in our life is because we deserve it. But it's for us. It's so hard to understand it because we just want to see only our good qualities. I am so good. I am so kind. I'm such a good grandmother or I'm such a good daughter. And why am I still single? We have to look at our nastiness and we have plenty of nastiness. And so that's what, if you can disconnect from yourself and start helping others, it's going to be a matter of time. It doesn't matter whether you're 70 years old or 80 years old. If God wants you to be with the right person, good person, he'll send you. But first he wants to see, how do you love him? Because all of these people, men and women, are his kids. And even animals and plants. So take care of his kids and he will take care of you. Yeah. All right, my friends, let's see. Wow, that was incredible wise. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. We'll have bad things we need to change. Yes, yes. But it's not like we need to. We need to want to change that. And when we want, we do action. Because just a good idea, I need to, I have to, it's going to create resistance. But once we absorb the knowledge, we start taking action. And when you start taking action, little by little, life changes. What if there's a man that provides for you, but you are not attracted to him? Should I keep him? No, no, you should not keep him. Uh, watch my uh, video from uh, previous um, 
two weeks ago TikTok where I was sharing if you're attracted to one to ten to a man, if one to five it's a friendship just because he is rich or just uh, um, has a big house or can provide and protect but you are not attracted to him, you gotta run away. You gotta attract a man who is between five to seven, eight and nine and ten, it's a danger zone because you are so attracted to him, it's just chemistry. You're going to have a good sex, but no foundation for healthy relationship. And between five and seven, because you have attraction to him, you have you are interested in him, you have conversation, you have trust, you have friendship, you have communication, then yes, you should. But just because of money, no, no, not at all. And same thing with men. Yeah, she's sexy, she's model. But after three, six months, he will be bored out of it because she has no brain. And at that point, a man wants more than just attraction. He needs to have her intelligence. She doesn't have to be um, very smart, like 100% smart, or like a professor. But she needs to have a conversation, a dialogue where he's not bored as well. Yeah. How to strengthen commitment from a husband? You cannot strengthen commitment from a husband. The only thing you can do is build your relationship to God. And when you build your relationship to God and when you trust Him, you feel the true security. Because a woman wants to strengthen commitment with husband because she doesn't trust him. She wants to make sure that he is only hers and only commits to her, doesn't go on the side. But that trust, first of all, comes from above. When you have the strong relationship and you trust God, then you can trust yourself and then you can trust husband. And that's how you strengthen the commitment. It doesn't come from him. It comes from you. But you won't be able to generate it until you connect to the source. And most of us, again, think the source, I'll go to church for two hours, I'm going to hear the priest or a pastor, that's a good mark, check mark, I'm spiritual. Or I'm eating veggies, I'm spiritual, I'm good. Or I'm doing yoga once a week, I'm spiritual. No, my friends, no, that's not spiritual. Having relationship to God on a daily basis, whether it's from prayer, meditation, or affirmation, that's your relationship to God, then you're spiritual. Everything else is an illusion. I'm eating healthy. I am skinny. I am spiritual. <laughs> no, my friends, let's be honest, you know, and I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking to true relationship to God. But in our DNA, we're, we're like, God doesn't exist. I don't care about God. I believe in science, psychology. Psychology is great here. But what about your soul? But I believe also in working hard 40 hours a week to get more material goods that you will get rid of in 30 days or maximum a year. That doesn't really matter. But that's what everybody wants. More material, more material things, more consumerism. Let's chop the trees. Let's build more homes, bigger homes. And who cares that I'm single in a 3,000 square feet house? Someday, one day, I'm going to attract this woman or a man. Or I'm going to work like a slave in an apartment and will be miserable. Nobody's learning how to be a human. How to have kindness. How to treat people. But everybody is chasing money. I got to have... Uh, Michael Kors or Nike or Dolce & Gabbana or Versace or whatever else. People are so <laughs> brainwashed by the magazines, movies, TV, and not really realizing what's truly at the core, what's truly important. Material things, really? Or really value relationship, your family, your husband, your wife, your kids, and your relationship to parents. That's very cheap. That's how I call our society right now. It's very degraded. Yeah. We change the values from God to stuff. Stuff that we don't even really need. Do we need 20 t-shirts? Do we need 20 jeans? Really? While other people are starving in the rest of the world? Think about it, my friends. Yeah. Thank you for the hearts, my friends. What if your partner never helps me with money or paying anything for my or my son? Again, my friends, goes back to the same thing. We, de we attract what we deserve. If you think that it's his duty to pay you and help you, he will not have a desire. He will not have a desire. Men are, nowadays are also questioning, why, why do I need a woman? What do I get from her? Because men can buy anything. 
anything. They can cook themselves, they can clean now, they can even buy sex if they want to, they can get an es escort. The only thing they want from women is femininity, admiration. They want uh, appreciation. But how many women do you know that give that? Honestly, I know 1%, myself and my girlfriend, honestly. And it took me many years to learn that because I didn't know how. And until I became spiritual, there was so much driven masculine energy in me. I didn't know how because I thought I can figure it out and can provide everything on myself. And it took me years to become feminine and appreciate men for who they are. And so can you appreciate him? Can you admire him? Can you accept him for who he is? So he will become a masculine provider and protector? That's the question. Because they don't have to do anything. They have to be inspired to do that. And the only thing inspires men to be in action and provide, lead and protect is by your femininity. But are you feminine? That is the question. Because you cannot demand something until you make changes. Become feminine and he will provide. You can inspire him. You can influence him to provide and protect. You will teach him how to lead. So he will make decisions in the household. But until you change, don't demand that. Yeah, until I became feminine, I was still working, even though four hours a week, but I was still working. Once I fully shed off that masculine energy, I am now 100% dependent. But most of the women don't want to be dependent. That's another problem. They don't want to be fully dependent and rely on their husband. They still want to go and work and make their own money and still criticize their man or give me more and do more and help me with this and help me with that. Here you have to choose. Either you're success-oriented and you're masculine. And if you're masculine, you're going to attract a feminine man who would not be inspired to do anything. Or if you shift to being a feminine, you will attract a masculine man. Or you, by shifting to femininity, your man will become a masculine. And then everything flows. But you cannot have both. Go to war, become independent, successful, and have a man who will provide and protect. It doesn't work like that. Here you have to choose. And women having a hard time. To understand this concept because they became so logical fully out of tune with their soul and intuition and how things should be yeah so thank you for the heart my friends i love my wife she's yelling on everything mm. wives are yelling on everything when they are overwhelmed and stressed if she's working and then on top of it, she has to come home, cool, clean and organize everything, she's overwhelmed or stressed. Or because you are sharing so many problems with her that she cannot handle it. Maybe kids are sharing problems, her parents, her friends, you. And on top of it, she has a job at work. And on top of it, she has a job at home because women at home, not relaxing. Men are relaxing at home. They come after work and they lay down and they eat, watch TV, and they're in their cave relaxing. Woman at work is not at home, is not relaxing. She's working. She needs to organize. She needs to clean. She has to take care of the house. And so women nowadays have two jobs, work and home. And so when she has these both jobs, she cannot handle even a little stress and she starts yelling and screaming. So if you want your wife to become calm, loving, relax, start taking away responsibilities from her, start providing, start protecting and say, honey, rest, rest, let me do the dishes, rest, let me help you to do the cooking, rest, let me do the homework with son, rest, let me take kids to the playground, start helping her out. Yeah. My husband says I'm so beautiful, but doesn't feel connected to me. I'm loving and he is distant. I don't know you, so it's hard for me to really say what's going on. Because again, um, there's more to the story that you're sharing. And I cannot read between the line. But one thing, there's a possibility, but again, I might be guessing, is that <clears throat> you probably were, um, you probably grew up either with emotionally distant mom or dad. And that's why you attracted emotionally distant husband. And to you, it's a comfort zone. Um, I usually share the story. I remember once I was in India and I was in town where close to the ocean where people were living uh, in the industry where they were fishing a lot of fish. And a lot of fish were dead and it stinked so bad. 
so bad. And there was a wife uh, who married this fisherman and she was always complaining. She's like, Alice, I'm so tired of the smell. It's terrible. It's killing me. I hate living here. And I said, well, I'm heading out out of town tomorrow. Would you like to come with me so you can see a change for the first time? Because she'd never been outside of this fisher town. So I took her with me. We went to this completely different town. There was no smell of this dead fish. It was, it smelled like flowers for the most part. It was beautiful, even though it was hot, but it was beautiful and the air was fresh. At night, she comes to me at two o'clock in the morning, knocks on my door and she said, Alisa, I cannot sleep. I'm like, what, why are you not sleeping? She's like, Alisa, you won't believe this. I'm so used to, to the smell of dead fish that I cannot sleep now because it's not smelling like, like dead fish. And so the next day, we were planning to stay there for three days. She ran home. And then she called me. Then she emailed me and she said, Alisa, thank you so much for taking me out of town. Because then I realized that I'm so used to, to the smell of dead fish that I could not even sleep without it. Now, the reason why I'm sharing the story with you, it's an illusion that you will be happier with somebody else. Is that your comfort zone to be with someone who is not connecting to you. If you meet a man right now who will be telling you, I love you, you're the most beautiful, you're awesome, you're this and this and that, that will be not comfortable to you. Because again, we attract someone who feels comfortable to us, even if they're angry, even if they're critical, even if they're nasty, <laughs> frustrated, anxious, depressed with ADHD and etc. So please hear my point. Until you heal, until you overcome your childhood traumas, you will be more and more comfortable with what you're used to. So I hope that helps. What responsibility should a stay-at-home mom do? My wife does nothing. I tried telling her. Mm -hmm. uh, one second, my friends. You see, the attitude that you have calculating what your wife does is already a wrong attitude. Because I don't know your wife's story. But we usually... Mm, women we're very in tune with our consciousness but when we feel it doesn't matter whether it's a man or a woman that our partner wants something from us and demands that we will on purpose as a human beings gonna resist doing that for example I'm a stay-at-home mom now for the past year and what are my responsibility? Organizing, cooking, cleaning, taking care of our son, doing sometimes with him homework and entertaining him, taking him to fun places. However, I do meditation and prayer on a daily basis and I have a lot of love to give. If your wife doesn't have any idea how to do spiritual practices, where will she have this love and source of energy to do anything? If she'd been working before, she probably so exhausted and overwhelmed or she has traumatic childhood or critical parents that she's now recuperating in the marriage. And she wants a break. And until she starts uh, spiritual practices, again, she will not have a resources to cook, to clean, to organize, to raise kids, to do homework with them. And so you got to give her a break, really. You know... I remember in the first year of our marriage, I was pregnant um, and my husband lost his job. And it was very difficult for him. He was even hiding it from me for a first week. And I see he started drinking whiskey. And I was so frustrated. I'm like, what's going on? Why my husband is drinking whiskey? Some of you probably heard the story. I shared it before. And then finally, I said, listen, we got to talk. You got to share what's going on with me. I kind of cornered him. I said, please talk to me because I'm getting scared. What happened? Are you seriously ill? Somebody died in the family. What's going on? Why are you drinking? And finally, he said, I lost a job. And now you're pregnant. I feel responsible, feel guilty, ashamed that you're working still and I cannot provide and our son gonna born in a few months and next day I felt his pain he came home after searching for a job I put whiskey for him and I gave it to him I said drink drink even though it was very painful for me to see but I realized he's in pain he's stressed he's 
overwhelmed that he cannot find a job. And I was giving him whiskey like that for three days. On the first day, he was shocked and he said, Alisa, I got it. Thank you for accepting it. I don't longer need to drink whiskey. But all, all I'm trying to say, we need to accept our partners, husband or wife, with whatever we don't like about them. You don't like that she's lazy? Accept it. You don't like your husband, he's drinking? Accept it. You don't like the man who is not providing and protected? Accept it. You don't like your wife that she's not putting makeup or clothes? Accept her. The moment you accept someone, they start feeling the pool of love. But how can you accept them? Is again, accepting first yourself. And it's easier said than done. How can you accept them? Is by again, working on yourself. And the fastest and cheapest way, free way of doing uh, these practices is spiritual practices. Or you can invest five, ten thousand dollars in therapy. You're going to help your mind, but you're still going to be empty on the realm of soul. And when you do spiritual practices, you're not just filling yourself up with the soul. You're starting to get also knowledge and help your mind as well. And then you're probably going to need only 10 or 15 sessions of therapy, but not two or three years. So, my friends, choice is yours, but we really got to work on ourselves instead of judging. So, I'm going to take a few more questions, my friends, and I'm going to leave you. Can you inspire your men to make more money and become ambitious? Yes, you can do that. How you can do that is becoming feminine. The more you are feminine, acknowledging and admiring your man and accepting his income, because our main duty as a wife is to accept his income, even if he makes only 40000 a year and you live in a shitty apartment. If you acknowledge him, admire him and accept that soul is good, then he would want to fight for you. He would want to become a better man. But if you constantly... Come on, we need to have a bigger house. Kids need to go to Lifetime Gym. We need to go to vacation, Jamaica. Come on, start making money. Then he will have no desire to make more money. Then you will probably have to go to a job or even second job to get all of the niceties, material things that you want. We got to learn to accept where we at. But we as a human beings constantly want more, more, more. My neighbors have a Tesla. I need to have Tesla. My neighbors bought a big house. I need to buy a big house. Everybody has nice clothes. I need to have nice clothes. Why? Why do you need to have nice clothes? Do you want to work on your soul and become a better person and have a happy relationship? Or do you want to have all of those material things? Because women who have all of these material things are really miserable in the relationships. They're either single or they have a feminine man who are kind of like their boy kids. They're constantly telling them around, do this, do this, do this and do that. And they have no respect and have no intimacy. So therefore, you have to really question, what do you really want? You want this material things and a boy toy kind of boyfriend? Or do you want a real man? But in order to get a real man, you got to become a real woman. A feminine woman is a real woman. So with that said, my friends, I am going to um, answer one more question and I'm going to depart. Should we accept him if he acts goofy, weird sometimes, not in a bad way? Of course. It's his personality. Sometimes he likes to be goofy and weird, cute. Say cute. And by the way, when you stop laughing at your man's jo uh, jokes, he'll find somebody else who will be laughing at his jokes. It hurts his um, ego and his soul. So absolutely accept it and laugh at him and be goofy with him. Can you please talk more about femininity? My friends, it's um, not a quick topic, but instead of me talking about it, can I advise you highly? Rather than me talking about femininity, watch my spiritual videos on YouTube because three minutes answers here and there on TikTok, not going to make a difference in the long run or even now. Because once you're going to, again, start your spiritual journey and doing daily, five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, either affirmation, either meditation or prayer, you're going to start peeling off your masculine energy, and that's how you're going to become feminine. But all of those feminine courses that tell you how you should wear a skirt, how you should put makeup, how you should do a hair, that's not going to make you feminine. You might look feminine and dress right and might even say right things, but your soul is still going to be angry, dissatisfied, and masculine. And men smell that way miles away. And so if you want true femininity without spiritual practices, it's a lie that you're going to become feminine. I've been on those courses many years ago. I've read books. It didn't help. 
honestly zero results waste of time and money so that's why in my experience I was very masculine and even right now I'm using masculine energy to be in a conversation with you because I have to use logic, I have to answer your questions, but the moment the TikTok is off, changing, becoming feminine in my feminine dress at home and that's it. Laid back, calm energy where I'm nurturing, taking care of my family. But how you can get there? Through spiritual practices. Watch my videos, join my spiritual group every other Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Time. I have ladies from Poland, Germany, Prague, Las Vegas, New Jersey, um, and the rest who are in Atlanta, they come to our home. That is English-speaking group. And every other Saturday in Russian, if you speak Russian, join my spiritual group in Russian. <clears throat> And it's only $30 donation. And by the way, those $30 goes to invite the spiritual speakers every two to three months to a bigger lectures. I don't keep anything. Honestly, we're doing okay. So with that said, if you're interested, send me the me message either on YouTube or Instagram or even on TikTok. Sooner or later, I'll get it and I'll add you to the group. With that said, my friends, thank you for being patient. Thank you for being with me in this conversation. Because every conversation you get closer and closer, hearing this knowledge in your soul, and at some point you're going to start doing these practices. And when you're going to start doing these practices, that's when you're going to change. When you're going to wake up five minutes earlier to do meditation, affirmation, or a prayer. With that said, I love you, my friends. Thank you for your likes, your roses, your hearts. Thank you for sharing. <clears throat> Thank you for questions. Have a good night, wherever you are. Namaskar.